Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic, and we're heading to Modern this week. I'm super excited, it's been a while since we've had a Modern Budget Magic deck, and we are playing one of the most over-the-top, insanely aggressive decks maybe that we've ever played. So, there's been a lot of talk in the past week about Modern becoming a turn 3 format when people kill you pretty regularly on turn 3, and I figured... Well, what's the solution to that? If people are going to try to kill us on turn three, uh, maybe we just got to build a deck to try to kill our opponents on turn two. So the end result of this deck is turn two tokens, a deck that is not only incredibly aggressive, it's basically eight whack on steroids, but also super cheap, 68 bucks in the paper world, 10 ticks on Magic Online. So incredibly cheap, especially for modern, a pretty expensive format. A quick reminder before we break down the deck, if you enjoy Budget Magic and this Turn 2 Tokens deck, it would be amazing of you if you could take a quick second, click that subscribe button down on the corner of your screen. It's a great way to keep up and support the channel and the site for free. Uh, anyway, let's talk Turn 2 Tokens. So, the idea of this deck, and this is a Kadoltha Rebirth deck, we had an instant deck tech, it may be a week ago that featured Kadolta Rebirth, sacking like Sigil of Distinction and Engineered Explosives, and I like the idea of using Kadolta Rebirth to be really aggressive, but the deck was kind of weird and just some of the things I didn't like. So uh, I, this is kind of a, a version of Kadolta Rebirth that I think is slightly better. Kadolta Rebirth is where we started with this deck. I said, well, you can build a really aggressive Kadolta Rebirth deck. Uh, the deck in our instant deck deck was playing like token anthems, Leyline of the Meek, for example, Intangible Virtue. I thought, well, wouldn't it be better if we could play Bushwhacker effects to pump up our Kadal 3 Birth tokens, give them haste? So I figured, well, maybe instead of playing these random do nothing artifacts to facilitate Kadal 3 Birth, which makes three 1-1 one, one red goblin tokens for only one mana, but you have to sack an artifact to cast it. Maybe instead of playing these do-nothing artifacts, we play artifact creatures like Memnite and Ornithopter. So not only do Memnite and Ornithopter let us resolve our Kadal 3 birth on turn one, they also are creatures that get pumped up from our bushwhackers, so it kind of works on both ends. And then it's really this package of cards that has a ton of synergies throughout our deck. The three goblin tokens, also the Memnite and Ornithopter, Everything is kind of built around these cards. So ideally, we come out of our first turn with three goblins. That's step A, plan one of our deck. Then on turn two, we have a bunch of free cards, free creatures that are actually pretty big. So Burning Tree Emissary, you probably know, 2-2 two, two for two, but it gives you back two mana when you cast it. So we can just essentially dump any number of Burning Tree Emissaries from our hand for free on turn two. So this means we can make the three one ones. On the next turn, we Burning Tree, Burning Tree, tree, gives us a bunch of creatures to pump up with our bushwhacker effects, but then we also have Pact of the Titan, which is high risk, high reward. Pact of the Titan facilitates our potential turn to kill, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it also can kill us just as easy, easily. So we get a 4-4 four, four giant creature token for free, zero mana, but we have to pay five mana our next upkeep or we die. So we pretty much need to kill our opponent the turn we cast Pact of the Titan, because if we're doing this on turn two or turn three, we're likely not going to have the mana to pay for it, and we're just going to die on our own upkeep to the pack trigger if we're not careful. But imagine this, like it gives us the most straightforward turn to kill where we can just play multiple packs of the titans all four even that's 16 power play a bushwhacker which pumps them up gives them haste we just deal more than 20 damage on the spot we just the pack to the titans of course it's magical christmas land normally we'll have one maybe two if we're lucky but that's a ton of power when we can give them haste from the bushwhacker effects so turn one making those goblin tokens off of our Memnites and Ornithopters with Kadal 3 Birth, turn two, play a bunch of free stuff, and then we have our Bushwhackers. So Goblin Bushwhacker and Reckless Bushwhacker, pretty close to the same card. Two mana, if we pay their Surge cost or their Kicker cost, uh, and they give all of our creatures plus one, plus zero, and haste until end of turn. So all of our Kadal 3 Birth Goblins become two powered creatures that lets them hit for six all of our burning tree emissaries three power our tokens from pack to the titan five power so the way we win the game on turn two most commonly is by casting two 
bushwhackers. If we have two bushwhackers in our hand, it allows us to usually just kill our opponent. We have the three goblins on turn one. We play, say, Pack to the Titan, and then double bushwhacker amounts to 20 damage, game over. And we even have Haze of Rage, which is a backup bushwhacker, but we need to have a bushwhacker to go with it. So it's very good as a second bushwhacker, uh, even better than a bushwhacker in a lot of cases, but we gotta have the first one because Haze of Rage doesn't give our creatures haste, so it doesn't allow our Pack to the Titan tokens, our Burning Tramazaries to attack. But when we have, say, a Reckless Bushwhacker, we can cast Haze of Rage afterwards, and because it has Storm, it's going to give all of our creatures at least plus two plus zero. And if we cast a Mennonite before that, plus three plus zero, because it's plus one plus zero, but it copies for each spell we cast before it each turn, so we have some super explosive turns where we just kind of cast all of our free stuff, cast a Bushwhacker to give everything haste, and then finish off our explosive turn with Haze of Rage, just makes all of our stuff super massively huge and kills our opponent right away. So casting two Bushwhackers in a turn, or a Bushwhacker and then a Haze of Rage, obviously requires at least four mana. So the last important part of the deck is some fast mana. We have Infernal, Plunge, Simeon Spirit Guide, and Battle Him. These are all ritual effects, essentially, and they're all important to adding up to the four mana we need to cast two Bushwhackers on turn two. So turn one, we get the could all three birth. Turn two, we want to play all of our free stuff, and then have enough mana that we can use a ritual to have four mana to cast double bushwhackers. So Infernal Plunge is a dark ritual at sorcery speed that adds red mana, but we have to sack a creature to do it. So the idea here is on turn two, we'll hopefully have two lands. We will cast meh, all our free stuff, cast maybe a Mem Knight. Then we can just sack the Mem Knight or whatever our worst creature is to the Infernal Plunge. That gives us three mana. We have one untapped land. That equals four mana. That means double Bushwhacker, kill our opponent. Battle Him kind of does it all on its own. If we could also rebirth on turn one and play a Pack to the Titan, or a Burning Tree Emissary, that's going to give us four creatures on the battlefield, battle him two mana, add a red for each creature we control, so as long as we have four creatures, we use our two lands to add the two mana, battle him puts us up to four mana, and that's, again, double Bushwhacker time for the win. And then Simeon Spirit Guide is only plus one mana, but occasionally, we aren't going to win on turn two or turn three, and the game's going to go a little bit longer because of our hand, our opponent has disruption. So even though it's only plus one mana, which is still helpful, our deck really skimps on land, so sometimes we're not going to have the two lands that we need, and we're going to want to Simeon Spirit Guide to cast our Infernal Plunge, and then use our one land to get up to four mana for the double Bushwhackers, but it can also just be a creature that we cast and use to attack. And then we have some two drops that aren't helpful for winning the game on turn two, Dragon Fodder and Mog War Marshal. They're essentially the same card. They make two 1-1 one -one goblins for only two mana. They're really helpful for winning the game on turn three, so occasionally we'll have hands where we Mog War Marshal on turn two, then on turn three we go into the cast all of our free spells, use our rituals, double bushwhacker, uh, go down that path and try to win on turn three, and it's just two more bodies. So if we have Kidalth Rebirth on turn one, Mog War Marshal on turn two, that's going to give us five one ones. On turn three, if we double bushwhacker, five one ones, getting pumped up, pumped up, plus the bushwhackers pumping each other equals up to 20 damage. So there's a lot of different paths to 20 damage on turn three involving the Dragon Fodders and War Marshals. As far as the mana base, 15 lands, about as light on lands as we can get. That means one in four cards in our deck is a land, which means our opening hands are probably going to have slightly less than two lands. And that's pretty much where we want to be. The way our deck loses is if we have four or five land hands, or if we keep like a three land hand and draw a couple lands in a row. So we really need to draw as much action as possible. One of the ways to make sure that happens is just playing the lowest land count possible. And remember, even though we only have 15 lands, we have the rituals to add additional mana, we have the Simeon Spirit Guides that work like a land for one turn, so we have a lot more mana sources than it looks like because of all the ritual effects. In the sideboard, Tormod Script is there mostly for dredge. It's a great card against dredge. Plus, in our deck, being a zero cost artifact means the opportunity cost is really low. So we can play Tormod Script, and then 
maybe it's awesome and we can use it to hate on Dredge. If it's not awesome, we sack it to Kudal 3 Birth, whatever, it still is fine. Pithing Needle's kind of the same way. We can bring it in to fight against any activated abilities on permanents our opponent might have, but... If we don't end up needing it because of how the game plays out, sack it to Kudal 3 Birth. And then we have some random removal. Outnumber and Massive Raid take advantage of the fact that we're likely going to have a lot of creatures. Outnumber becomes a creature only lightning bolt if we cast a Kudal 3 Birth. And if we have some other stuff too, it can take down a Tarmogoyf, a Grim Flare, something like that that's blocking our path. Massive Raid can go to our opponent's face, kind of the same as Outnumber, but hits a creature or a player damage equal to the creature we control and then sudden shock is there mostly for infect type matchups but it's also helpful against affinity and that is turn two tokens for modern and this deck is super sweet so in all honesty it can be inconsistent. You will see that in our matches. There are good hands and bad hands. Sometimes we draw too many lands. Sometimes we just draw the wrong parts of our deck. But when our deck is good, it is absurdly good. And it is good more often than not. In the games that we lose with this deck, most often it feels like we are losing to ourselves because we get an inconsistent draw. It is pretty rare with the games I've played with this deck that it feels like our opponent actually just straight up beat us. It feels like oh, our deck didn't do what it's supposed to do so we couldn't win. But in the games where our deck works the way we want it to, we can beat anyone. It is so incredibly aggressive that it's really hard to stop and we just run over people faster than anyone else runs over us so we get those super quick wins fast enough that we can we can kill our opponent before they kill us even if they're trying to kill us on turn three or turn four so i think the deck is really sweet the good turns far outweigh the bad turns and the good turns are just so good and so fun anyway the deck is awesome it is super cheap you will have a blast with it if you like the Goblin Bushwhacker decks that we've played before, like the Goblin deck. Uh, you will love this deck. You already have a lot of the cards for this deck. It is just that deck, but super sped up, as fast as you can possibly get an 8 whack deck. That's the idea of this deck, to make it as fast and as devastating as possible. Anyway, that's been our deck tech for Turn 2 Tokens. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay videos, and I will talk to you soon.